I want today, uh, I want to talk today about the Zyberquidn invariant. More or less the whole point why we uh, did uh, all this stuff in the previous lectures. Anyway, so uh, what we had, so I call, um, we had the gauge group. This was space of maps from, uh, I took 4 to M to U1, and this uh, acts on C, which was W3 to S plus times A3 to all that. So as I discussed the last time, uh, it is not really uh, important which uh, coefficient or which uh, degrees uh, we take here. So one of the arguments today will require a somewhat higher uh, degree. So we will take here five and four. But uh, as you know, we could have fixed any k sufficiently large and back uh, with any k here. In any case, <coughs> So this action is not free, right? Uh, so why is this the case? Uh, now, uh, if uh, you consider the stabilizer of a point uh, psi a, you will immediately see that, uh, you know, whenever uh, um, whenever this, uh, or, uh, let's say it that way, uh, if psi is zero, uh, so uh, everywhere is zero, I have always non-trivial stabilizer, which is uh, just a circle given by constant maps. Uh, and so uh, if, uh, it turns out that this is if and only if, and this is uh, just an easy observation. In any case, uh, so uh, if you have a solution uh, with C identically zero, this is called reducible. So uh, so these are points where uh, the uh, group, uh, the action of the group is not free, so we will just discard those, and I will denote by C star the space of all uh, those uh, points psi a, where uh, psi is not identically zero. Okay, <clears throat> now, uh, recall from the last lecture, so what we uh, wanted to have, we wanted to have the moduli space to be a compact space, and we proved this the last time. We wanted to have this uh, a manifold, and this required to have local slices at each point, and we wanted to have an orientation. So here is uh, one of the uh, properties that we need, and uh, the claim is that for any uh, psi a in C star, there exists local slice. So a local slice through this point psi a. And this doesn't have anything to do with the cyber equation. equations, it's an uh, absolutely general claim. So here is a sketch of the proof. So uh, what do we have? Uh, we can, uh, you remember, uh, we have the in infinitesimal action. This was R psi A uh, on psi. It was minus psi psi d A uh, d psi. <coughs> so it was infinitesimal action, 
And uh, you know, uh, in general, if you have any manifold uh, and we have an action here uh, of some group, so as in, uh, as in the example of the last time, uh, but now if we fix a point, we have the image of, so, uh, of the infinitesimal action, so let me do this infinitesimally. This is this line. Um, and if you want to have a slice, we have to pick uh, a space which is uh, sort of orthogonal, or at least complementary to this space, and we can try to choose the orthogonal complement to that. All right, uh, this is the slice. Now, <clears throat> what is the image of the infinitesimal action? This is uh, nothing else but just the kernel of the formal adjoint operator. Right, and this one is easy to compute. So we have R psi A adjoint on psi dot, say, A dot is A star A dot plus I times the imaginary part of uh, psi dot psi. Okay, and as a slice, we can declare S to be an open uh, neighborhood of the uh, zero in the kernel of R psi A, U as a map from W uh, four two into W three two, and so this means okay, and so uh, it is very easy to compute. Uh, uh, we have now a, a natural embedding of S into the configuration space, and what you can easily prove is that the tangent space at the point psi A to S uh, plus the image of R psi A is a whole space, that is T psi A to C, and which means at least at infinitesimal at the point psi a, we have a slice, but then this, is, uh, this also holds in a small neighborhood of the origin. So that we get a slice, uh, you know, at least locally. So this gives you a slice. Okay, so and this is a good news. Uh, now we have slices through, the, uh, through each point. Uh, at least if the uh, through uh, irreducible points. Uh, now we need also a perturbation. All right, so in general, if we just take the pre-image of some fixed point, there is no reason to expect that the moduli space will be smooth. So what we need, uh, we need uh, some family of maps. And this is how we do, so we take as W again, uh, I will denote this by the same uh, letters from C times <coughs> W uh, 3 to lambda 2 plus T star M as well as in imaginary numbers uh, into you know, uh, W three to S minus uh, times W three to lambda two plus. And so, what is this map? Uh, I will take uh, psi a, a point in C, and eta. This is a self-dual two-form. Uh, on M uh, with uh, you know purely imaginary one, 
And I will send this to the, uh, let me write this explicitly, so da plus of psi and fa plus minus mu of psi minus eta. So I just added the one term eta to the second equation and that's it. Right, and the point why we are doing this, because <coughs> the following proposition can be proven, uh, is that zero is a regular value for this tube map cyber written. Now, uh, I don't want to give you the full proof, but at least uh, an idea how this works in sketch of proof. Well, what you can easily see is that uh, if you differentiate this map with respect to eta, uh, it is surjective on the second component. Right, so here is uh, nothing uh, to prove. Uh, now what we want to show is that the map, maybe. to show that the map uh, from G psi A uh, C into W32 S minus. Uh, so this is just the differential of uh, the zyberg witten map, right? Uh, what we have is psi dot A dot maps to da plus psi dot plus one half um, a dot times psi is surjective. Right, we want to establish this. Now, what does this mean? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, what does this mean that this uh, map is not surjective? Uh, it means that I have uh, an element, so I know that the image of this map is a closed subspace, so I can choose, uh, if it's not the whole space, I can always choose an element which is orthogonal uh, in the L2 sense to, this, to the image of this map. So, if not, then uh, there exists uh, no, um, let me say phi in uh, gamma s minus, so if you wish, w32. So as that, the scalar product of da plus psi dot plus one half at dot psi with phi in L2 sense zero. <coughs> now if I put <coughs> a dot uh, equals zero, what I will have is that g a minus of phi equals zero, right? So this implies for a dot equals zero. So I have this equality. Anyway, uh, in the same vein, I can also see that, uh, you know, the L2 scalar product of A hat times psi with phi is zero, and this holds for any A dot. And also, the, uh, the point is this. Uh, so uh, I have chosen the exponent here so that we have a, uh, an embedding in C0, S minus. And if you assume that phi doesn't vanish at some point, then it doesn't vanish in a neighborhood of this point. And I can always choose a dot so that uh, this will never be zero, right? And this actually implies that phi vanishes everywhere. Okay, and this proves that the image of this map is actually surjective. 
Um, so maybe uh, the, uh, it is true what I said, uh, but uh, so here, here is uh, one more step. Um, Um, so uh, w what you see from this argument that uh, phi actually uh, vanishes on an open subset uh, of your manifold M, uh, but then uh, you can uh, invoke the unique continuation principle for uh, elliptic uh, problems, and this actually tells you that phi must vanish everywhere. So that's the argument. Uh, technically, what you have here is a so-called uh, Aron's Jans. So I don't know quite how to pronounce the surname. Uh, in any case, uh, this proves uh, the subjectivity of the differential of the zyberg witten map, so that is, uh, zero is a re regular value for this perturbed map. What was the role of the perturbation in this I mean, uh, this, this is exactly, uh, this allows us to prove the subjectivity. Right, so we, we, uh, I used here uh, this perturbation to show that uh, you know the second component of the differential, that is projection to this factor, is subjective. Yeah, yeah uh, I didn't, I didn't write this. I just uh, said we need to prove that the first component is subjective because the second one is sort of automatic. <laughs> Okay, now so uh, what we have obtained so far is the following corollary and the statement is that for a generic eta in W32 lambda 2 plus, the Moduli space M eta star, that is, we consider the space of all solutions to the perturbed Zyberg Witten equations, psi A, such that dA plus of psi is zero, and FA plus minus, oh, let me write, equals mu of psi plus eta. And we additionally require that psi is uh, not everywhere vanishing. Of course, we divide this by the gauge group. Uh, it's a smooth manifold of dimension t equals one fourth uh, of C1 of L that squared minus two times the Euler characteristic of M minus three times the signature of M. Okay, so <clears throat> what you have already seen is that uh, this is actually a manifold uh, for a generic uh, eta. Uh, and the only thing uh, which is perhaps unclear where this dimension comes from, and this dimension comes from the idea uh, 
the thing uh, index theorem. So this is So I don't want to give you uh, the precise statement, but the point is that uh, whenever you have a linear elliptic operator, uh, the Atiyah Singer uh, index theorem tells you that the index uh, of the corresponding operator can be computed in terms of the characteristic classes. And if you plug this in uh, into the corresponding formula, the output is this formula. So that's, uh, that's how it goes. But now <coughs> we have, uh, that's a very good news, but we have created here a little problem, namely that this is uh, not anymore a compact space because we have uh, removed certain points and this sort of causes again a problem which we have to worry about. Uh, and this is what we will do next. So let me now discuss reducible solutions. So here is lemma. So assume the first n class of the determinant line bundle is non-zero. So here I think of the first n class as a uh, class in the f uh, f uh, second Durango homology group. But if you think of this as uh, a class in an integer valued uh, cohomology, then I'm saying that C1 is not a torsion class. Then for a generic metric G on M, the unperturbed cyber witten equations have no reducible solutions. Right, and this holds provided B uh, to plus of M is at least one. So uh, again, I don't want to uh, prove this theorem, but uh, uh, let me just uh, tell you uh, why this is the case. Um, all right, so uh, let us assume that we have indeed a reducible solution. So uh, assume uh, zero A uh, is a solution, right? Which just means that F A plus uh, is zero. But what this means is that uh, if I take the first n class of the determinant line bundle, right, right this is represented by uh, i over 2 pi uh, <coughs> fa, and this is uh, minus i over 2 pi, uh, so, sorry, this is again i over 2 pi fa minus. So whenever now I have, so for any harmonic self-dual two form on M, I can take, uh, if I take the wedge product of uh, omega with uh, Fa, this is always zero, because whenever you have you know, self-dual and anti-self-dual forms, they wedge to zero. Uh, so what we get is, uh, from this, uh, well, we have F A which omega is zero. But in other words, this tells us that C1 L dat cup product with, uh, you know, uh, any form omega is zero. 
And now uh, I have assumed that this is not, well, this is not zero. So let me take a basis of cell dual harmonic two forms. So omega one, omega two, uh, omega k. This is a basis of H two plus. And <coughs> you can see this relation uh, as uh, k equations for a metric G. Right, so I, I have picked here a basis, but this basis sort of uh, depends implicitly on the choice of the metric, and this gives you k equations for G, and uh, if G is not in the set uh, G such that, um, you know, C1 L that uh, cup each omega k is zero, so now uh, what I have here, I have a co-dimension k subset in the set of all metrics, and if I stay away from the subset, then there is no reducible solutions. K is B2 plus, yes. And so uh, if k is at least one, I have at least one equation so that I can always move away uh, from uh, this sort of bad set. So if I have a family of metrics of dimension B2 plus generically, there will be a reducible solution? Uh, if B2 plus is one, then generically in a one parameter family, you will have a reducible solution. Exactly, yeah. That's precisely correct. What happens when B2 plus is zero? <laughs> uh, you can't say really much. I mean, that's really a bad case. So you have to, uh, uh, if B2 plus is at least one, you have the wall crossing phenomena. But if B2 plus is zero, then uh, you are more or less uh, lost. <laughs> That's precisely the reason why, uh, you know, this doesn't work. So, or at least why Poincaré conjecture is not tackled uh, in this way. Right. So <clears throat> what we have now, uh, we have now uh, a smooth manifold uh, which is compact and non-singular. Right. The, the only uh, remaining bit uh, is an uh, orientation, and let me discuss this now. So. Uh, the basic lemma, uh, which is uh, more or less just a trivial statement, but let me state it anyway, uh, is the following. So if you have two families of Friedholm operators, uh, let me write this as TP0, where P is in some parameter space, P, uh, which is assumed just to be a topological space, if uh, TP0 and TP1, where P is again in the same parameter space, are two homotopic families of, well, let me say linear Friedholm maps.
then the determinant bundle uh, of T0, of the family T0, uh, is isomorphic to, uh, T, to, to the determinant of T1. And what I uh, actually mean is a little more stronger uh, statement. Uh, I mean, uh, if I have a trivialization of uh, the determinant bundle of T0, this gives me a, uh, a trivialization of the uh, determinant bundle of T1. Right, uh, now, I mean, uh, what is the proof? The proof is just uh, a simple observation, right? Uh, and here, by the way, I mean a homotopic within the space of uh, linear fred hall maps. Right, but if you have a homotopy within fred hall maps, you have the determinant bundle uh, for T, uh, you know, uh, so this is uh, homotopy uh, on P cross zero one, uh, but the base here is homotopy equivalent to uh, you know uh, both P cross zero and P cross one. So whenever you have a trivialization on one of the ends, you will have a trivialization on the whole space. This will give you a trivialization on the other end. Okay. <coughs> Now, uh, so why did I state this? Now, so let me recall the deformation complex. Uh, so what we had was uh, zero into omega zero into gamma s plus plus omega one. So all forms here in this com uh, complex are imaginary valued, but I don't write this anymore. So into gamma s minus plus omega two plus plus zero. And we have computed here the maps ex explicitly, right? This was our uh, psi a, and this was a differential of the zyberg uh, map in at the point psi a. And so <coughs> what I have shown, what I have shown uh, was that R psi a uh, was of the form zero d plus some R zero, and this is the zeros order operator. And similarly, uh, the differential of the zyberg witten map uh, at the point psi a. Now, this is a two by two matrix, so it can be written as uh, d a plus zero zero and uh, d plus plus a zeros order 